Welcome to this lecture about model selection. In this lecture, we cover forward and backward selection and the method of best subset selection. We'll also discuss model selection based on validation data. Note that I here assume that you have watched the previous video about how to compare models with ASC value. To explain how backward and forward selection work, we'll here use the same data set as in the previous video, where we have the variable age score on a math test, and six. These three variables have been collected to see if they are useful to predict the systolic blood pressure. We can fit the following model to the data. This model includes all explanatory variables and is therefore called the full model. Note that the intercept is estimated in all models. To select the best model, when we use backward or forward selection, we can use a number of different selection criteria, which may result in different output models. In this video, we'll use the AAC value to select between different models. As we discussed in the previous video, since the sample size is small in our example, we should compare the models based on the AACC value instead of the AAC value. Let's use the following model to see how backward selection based on the AACC value works. Note that backward selection is sometimes called backward elimination. This model has an ICC value of 69.96. If we remove the variable score from this model, the ICC value is reduced to 52.15. If we remove the variable age from the model, the ICC value is reduced to 62.18. And if we remove the variable sex from the model, the ACC value is increased to 71.63. Remember that the best model is the model with the lowest ACC value. Out of all variables in this model, the removal of the variable score results in the lowest ACC value, which means that this variable will automatically be removed by the backward selection method. We therefore now have the following reduced model which has an ICC value of 52.15. If we try to remove the variables age and sex from this model, we see that the ICC values are higher for such reduced models, compared to the current model. If none of the ICC values results in a lower ICC value than the current model, the procedure will stop and report the current model as the best model. By using backward selection, a model with the variables age and sex will be reported as the best model given our example data. We'll now see how forward selection works. Forward selection starts with the model including only the intercept. The method then tries to add individual variables one at a time to this model. We see that if we add the variable sex to the current model, that will result in a model which has a lower ACC value than the current model. We therefore add the variable 6 to the current model. This model has an ACC value of 53.07. We then try to add the variable score and age to this new model. Since age results in the lowest ACC value, it is added to the model. This means that we now have the following model. If we now add the variable score to this model, we see that the ACC value is higher than the current model. The procedure therefore stops and reports the following model as the best model. In this case, both the forward and the backward selection ended up with the same model. However, this is not always the case. One can also use a combination of backward and forward selection which is sometimes called bidirectional selection. We'll now see how the method of best subset selection works. This is our full model with all three explanatory variables. For simplicity, we illustrate this model like this. We then create a subset of models, which includes all possible models with one variable less than the full model which in this case is three models with two variables each. The last subset should consist of all possible models where only one variable is included. We then choose the best model in the subsets 
based on the residual sum of squares or the r squared value. Both measures will select the same model. In our example, we will select these two models because they have the highest r squared values in the subsets. Note that it is here fine to use the r squared value to compare models in the subsets because the models in the subsets all have the same number of parameters. We now compare the best models from the subsets. Note that we no longer compare these three models with the R-squared values because the number of estimated parameters in the models are now different. We should therefore use, for example, the ASCC value to compare the models. Since the model with the explanatory variables H and 6 has the lowest ASCC value out of all best subset models, we would select this model as the best model. One reason for breaking up the selection into two steps is to reduce the computational power when we deal with many variables. Automatic model selection methods are controversial because if there are many possible useless variables, the model will pick up such variables because they might by chance improve the fit of the model. Such a model would overfit the data, which means that it fits well with the data, the training data, but it will not fit well with new data based on the same variables that were selected. Automatic model selection methods should generally only be used for explanatory studies where potential variables are identified for further validation studies. Another way to select the best model is to use some sort of validation data set, which is the recommended way if you have plenty of data. We could then split the data into three parts by some random method. Then we create a number of candidate models that we like to compare. We then use the training data to estimate the parameters of all candidate models. For example, this means that we will fit all these models to the training data where we estimate the parameters in each of these models. Then we use the validation data set to select the model that fits best to the data. This means that we'll use our models with estimated parameters based on the training data to see how well they predict based on the validation data set. We could for example calculate the R-squared value of each of these models. Suppose that the following model would result in the highest R-squared value. That would tell us that this model is the best model for predicting new data. Finally, to determine the true performance of the best model, we can use the test data to calculate, for example, the R-squared value. This workflow is probably the optimal way to find the best model and to know how good such a model actually is. The problem is that our sample size is usually too small to separate the data into groups with even smaller sample sizes. Finally, note that the minimum sample size to estimate the parameters of a model is equal to the number of parameters we try to estimate. For example, in the following model, we try to estimate four parameters. Which is not possible because we here only have three data points. Some software tools might actually then estimate the values of these parameters. And set the last parameter to NA, which might cause confusion or errors if you then try to run an automatic stepwise selection method. A simple rule of thumb says that we should have at least 5 observations per parameter that we like to estimate, but the more the better. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at the regularization method called lesser regression, which can be used in cases when we like to fit a model with more parameters than we have observations, like in this example. This was the end of this lecture about methods of how to select the best model. See you in the next lecture about lesser regression, which can also be used for model selection.